This is an introduction to arterial line placement. This is an easy procedure to perform. Let's watch the ease and quickness this can be accomplished. Five points are located on the right side of the screen. Palpation of the artery, puncture of the skin, pausing, which we will discuss later, threading the wire, and last, threading the catheter. In order to improve your chances of success, proper positioning is key. It is standard to immobilize the hand on an arm board with a roll of gauze underneath the dorsal aspect of the wrist. The surface landmarks are the radial head and the flexi carpi radialis tendon. Palpation between these two structures usually yields a strong radial pulse. The aero catheter kit with its self-contained guide wire is the most common needle used for arterial line cannulation at BJC. The clear plastic tubing contains the guide wire and more importantly allows you to see pulsatile blood flow during cannulation. The guide wire can be extended and retracted into the needle using the black plastic handle on the back. Note that the wire leaves the tip of the needle as the handle is passed beyond the black mark. There should be no resistance when extending the wire past this point. Let's now go over the steps of A-line placement. Using the pads of your first and second finger on your non-dominant hand, analyze the location of the artery. With an average diameter of two and a half millimeter, take your time. This will avoid multiple attempts and potential injury. Step two, puncture. Grip the arrow with your thumb and index finger at the base of the catheter. Puncture the skin at 45 degrees using firm pressure to overcome the resistance of the skin. When using the arrow kit for arterial puncture, you must constantly be focused on the piece of the catheter between your two fingers. This is the first area to fill with blood and will be your first indication that you have successfully punctured the artery. Step three, pause. This begins once puncture of the artery has occurred and blood begins to amass in the clear plastic chamber behind the arrow kit. Most problems arrive at this moment and we're going to try to mitigate them right now. It is quite tempting to immediately thread the wire when you finally see blood at your end of the arrow catheter. We can't just be looking for blood in the catheter. We want rising blood, which can only be coming from a catheter inside the artery. If needed, slowly move the catheter millimeter by millimeter forward, then backwards, adjusting it until the blood again begins to rise. Drop your angles slightly. And you can begin step four, which is insertion of the wire. If at any time before you try to insert the wire, the column of blood ceases to rise, stop and make more readjustments. It is normal for the column of blood to stop rising once you start moving the guide wire. It is never normal for the guide wire to meet resistance. This is likely to occur as the plastic handle passes the black indicator. Stop and retract the guide wire. Check for the rising column and make small movements backwards and forwards, again trying to insert the guide wire. Another thing that can help is dropping your angle even further. Finally, we come to step five. Using constant pressure, or a twisting motion to overcome the resistance of the skin, place the catheter in the artery until you reach the hub. The arrow introducer can now be retracted and discarded. Keeping pressure on the area just proximal to the tip of the catheter will prevent blood from leaking out once this is removed. This next clip will be played at full speed. Step 1. Palpation. 2. Puncture. 3. Pausing. Notice the hesitancy as the column stops rising and readjustments. Four, wire easily inserted. Five, twisting off the catheter. Now for some quick tips. You already know the two biggest ones. Wait for a rising column of blood and make sure there's no resistance in the guide wire. Randomly stabbing the forearm is an inefficient way to find the artery. Also, by fully removing the catheter from the skin, each attempt increases the risk of clogging your catheter. Instead, organize your attempts. Create a map in your head and slowly shift the catheter a couple degrees each time. Withdraw the catheter almost to the skin before changing your angle. 
your patient will thank you also. Finally, if you are unable to thread the wire after multiple attempts, one common trick is to push the entire apparatus into the skin. The introducer will serve to push the catheter through the anterior and posterior wall of the artery. It is thus called the through and through method. You will need a separate straight guide wire for this technique. Since the catheter is through and through the artery, slowly retracting the catheter should yield a situation in which the tip of the catheter has just passed through the far wall of the artery while still remaining inside the lumen. Slow retraction until pulsatile blood flow is seen is key. Slow dripping blood without pulsatile flow usually indicates failure of this technique. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching.